Hello, welcome back. It's Professor Fiori, and in this video we're going to be looking at using the while loop construct in Python. So we've already looked at the for loop, which is a nice structure, very compact structure. The while loop is a little bit more open-ended, but you have to do a little bit more work for it. The while loop is particularly good if you have sort of an indeterminate number of times you're going to go through your loop. In other words, it's dependent on something fairly complex. It's not like a variable that's going to go one, two, three, four, five. For example, you could have a while loop as part of a game. And maybe the game ends when the player, their energy goes to zero. So you can have this while loop continue so long as player's energy is greater than zero. Another application would be where you're reading data from a file and you don't necessarily know beforehand exactly how much data is in the file. So you just have to keep on reading until you get to some kind of flag that indicates you're done. In fact, one of the last problems, one of the last uh, exercises in the lab manual uses exactly this structure for the while loop. So let's just take a look at sort of the basic underpinnings how this works. Obviously we have a reserved word while and then we simply look at a test condition. Um, it's kind of like an if statement in that regard. So you could say something like you know while a is uh, less than 10. Now this presupposes you have a variable called a you know, which I'll just throw in here and say it's 1. Okay. All right. Um, maybe in this case, what I'll do is I'll just print whatever A is. Now, what we have to do is somehow alter A so that eventually it's equal to or exceeds 10. Otherwise, this loop is going to go forever. Right? We don't want that to happen. Um, matter of fact, let me just show you what happens and how you get out of this. See, one, 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 one. You can see it's just it's just going to do ones and ones forever. So hold the control key and hit C, and this will interrupt. Right, got a keyboard interrupt. All right, so you don't want that to happen. If we just want to count up, we can say A gets the value of A plus one. In other words, its current value plus one. So when it starts off, it's one. Right, it passed this test. It prints. Then we take that value, 1, add 1 to it, that's 2, and we overwrite the old value. So A is now 2. And then we'll come back around. Is it less than 10? Yes. Okay, print it. Take that value of 2, add 1 to it, 3, overwrite the value. A is now 3. Come back up. Is it less than 10? Yes, it is. Print it. Take the 3, add 1 to it, that's 4, overwrite. A is now 4. And we just keep on doing this until eventually we get to 10. All right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right, notice less than or equal to 10, right? If we wanted 10, in this case, it's just less than, so we only get up to 9, all right? Okay, um, you can do some interesting things here. You know, you don't have to just add 1 or 2 or 5. Um, you could do something like this. I want to multiply it by 2. Now, that's not easy to do using a for loop. Let's look at this. All right, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. You know, you could do that in a for loop um, without using the range iterator. You could uh, just put a big list of values out there, but you know, you'd have to make however many you need. So if you needed to do this 100 times, that's how big it would have to be. Um, while is much more uh, adept at doing that kind of thing because you have this statement that allows you to control what A does, right? What happens to A. You could square A. You could take the sine of A. You could do all kinds of crazy stuff. Now, adding and subtracting, uh, or just multiplying and dividing, is so common that we have a shortcut for this. So if, if, for example, I just want to add 1 to A, instead of saying it like this, A is equal to A, A gets A plus 1, we can say A plus equals 1. That's just a shorthand way of saying it. So you've basically got the A plus 
and there's your A plus right there. So it just replicates this after the equal sign. All right, so just to verify that, this should just go one. I'll tell you what, let's knock this down because I don't want to go up to 99. Um, there we go, All right? One through nine like we did back here. All right, so it's the same basic thing. Cool. Now, that by itself, extremely useful. Oh, and by the way, before I go any further, if you want to do a count down, right, we can check to see if A is greater than a value and then, you know, subtract one or divide by two or, you know, whatever the heck it happens to be. Okay? And we can add other things in here. Just like with an if, you could have um, a logical thing in here like an, an or clause. So if either one of those things is true, the, the loop will continue. Or an and, where both of them would have to be true for the loop to continue. Now, another interesting thing going on is what happens if you have a loop inside of a loop? So let's check that out. I'm going to add um, another variable in here. I'm going to change this around a little bit. So let's say we have a variable called B. And, um, you know, A we were counting up. So let's, I don't know, let's divide down. I'm going to start this at 100. I'm going to start uh, a little loop for my while here, and I'll say as long as um, as long as b is let's say bigger than one. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to print out. By the way, notice the double layer of indent, just like we had with the nested if statements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print. We're inside, this is the inner loop. So we're going to print the values of A and B. Fairly simple. Now when we get done with this loop, the inner loop this is, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to take B and I'm going to divide it by 2. So I can say B gets B divided by 2 or I can do like so. All right. Oh, that indent's wrong. There we go. Um, I need to alter that A value. So let's do that uh, same thing we did last time. And uh, I'll tell you what, when we're done, we'll do another little print out over here of A and B. Oops. And then when we're totally done, in other words, both loops are exiting, I'll just type done. Okay, so maybe a little spacing here would help us isolate the pieces. All right, so this is the inner loop. So this says b greater than 1. We come through, start it off at 100, print out the values of a and b. Uh, b gets divided by 2. That's going to get down to 50. That's going to get divided by 2 again. Um, 25, 12 and a half, 6 and a quarter. On we go. When that finally gets below 1, We'll fall out, add 1 to A, do another print, and then we'll come back up. A will still be less than 10. B gets reset to 100. This loop is going to go all over again. And then it'll fall out and do another iteration for the A loop. All right, so it's like this is like the big wheel on the outside, and this is the little wheel on the inside that's spinning ever faster. So for every single iteration of the a loop, this B loop is going to run a whole bunch of times, right? Okay, now let's crawl up here. Okay, inner loop. So we're going to look at just like this section. Inner. Remember, A is the first thing printed, so A is 1. 
right? So we initialized A at 1, B got initialized to 100, A is less than 10, so we come on down here through here. B is greater than 1, it's 100, so we print enter A and B. So there's the 1 and the 100. B gets divided by 2. We come back up, is it still greater than 1? Yeah, it's 50 now. Okay, so print the A and B. Well, A hasn't changed. A is still 1. That's gone down to 50. Divide it by 2 again. All right, going to be 25. Um, and on we go, right? 12 and a half, 6 and a quarter, 3 and an eighth. And this thing just works its way down. Finally, we get, we get to a point right here that B is going to be uh, point, roughly 0.78. And this loop stops. Now, that's not this piece. Just bear with me for a sec. Right? This is the end of that iteration, because once it gets down here and divides by 2, and it checks to see if it's greater than 1, it isn't. So it doesn't print anything. It just comes down here and increments A. A is now 2. All right, And then it says print, I'm in the outer loop, A and B. So that's the value that B left off. In other words, this was the value of B that sort of broke this while loop right here. All right. All right, so then at this point it comes back up, A is 2, it's still less than 10, reset B to 100, so you can see all these inners, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, and there's the, the inside loop, 150, 25, just like it did before. And then the same thing will happen, it'll come down here, it'll break through unity, and then we have the outer loop, this thing running, A gets bumped up 1, so you can see, right? So here's the single run of the outer loop, all the ones. There's another run of the outer loop, all the twos, all the threes, all the fours. And for each one of those, you can see the inside loop, right? Cutting B in half. And we finally get down here where A is nine. And we go through the Bs, 100 all the way on down. And we hit the outer loop. This bumps up to 10. B is 0.78, so we're right here, and we say, well, is it less than 10? No, it's equal to 10. So that loop fails, boom, done. So it's like multiplying. The inner loop runs, like, what is it? Actually runs seven prints, okay? Um, and then the outer runs from uh, one up to nine, so it basically multiplies those two things together. That's how many individual print statements are being generated here. Okay, and then you've got, you know, an, uh, nine of these things being printed and one of these things being printed. Wow. Okay, so like loops within loops. This turns out to be extremely useful. Uh, we'll see some of this in the future. For right now, my suggestion is to take this bit of code and just start monkeying around with it. Change some values, you know, maybe add some input statements so that you can sort of programmatically alter these things. Now, for example, what would happen if, uh, just think about this for a sec, what would happen if you commented out that line, like you didn't reset B? What would the result of that be? Um, or maybe we, we did something weird with B, like we said, well, B is... Uh, you know, A times 10 or something like that. Try some of those things and see what you get, All right? In the process, just remember to watch the indenting, All right? So we've got this while, that's one level of indent, so this is associated with this, it's one level in from here. And then of course we have, all, right, all these line up, they're all inside this while. So everything in here is inside the A, A loop, and then everything here is inside the B loop. You might also try some things like uh, if statements, right? Doing printouts where um, you check using an if statement the value of A or B. Try to predict what it's going to do, run it, see it if your prediction was correct. If it's not, figure out why it's not correct. This is a great way to learn programming. You, you sort of kind of become in your mind the computer. So it's like a Zen thing. Be the computer. Be the computer, Danny. Just be the computer. Da, 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 da. 
don't try to be the human. Don't try to like look at this code and sort of holistically figure out what it's trying to do. Just do what the computer does, right? You got variables, they're gonna be incremented, they're gonna be divided, multiplied, whatever the heck it is. Just do it in a very strict, rote kind of fashion because that's exactly what the computer is doing. The computer doesn't look at this chunk of code and then try to figure out some big picture, you know, what is this doing? You know, it's not, you're not analyzing a novel here. All right, these are strict little instructions. They do little atomic things, right? Little one spot things. So think the same way, right? Be the computer, be the program. And with that, we'll call it a day. See you next time.